All right, this is the IGCSC MF questions uh, for, the for the paper uh, 2016, May, June. This is paper 2, two question number 10. Actually, I already promised one of my students I will make the vector video for him. So yeah, finally, I have time to do that. So let's have a look on this question. All right, so the vector P and Q are such that the P equals to 11i and negative 24j and Q actually equals to 2i plus uh, alpha j. All right, whenever I see the question in terms of the i and j, right, in terms of i and j, so I actually like to write in the column vector form. So normally what I will do is I will do something like this is 11 and this is negative 24. Okay, because in the column vector form, it's understood that the top position actually is for i and the bottom position actually is for j. Okay, this is understood. All right, so yeah. So at the same time, I will do the q also. So q basically equals to 2i plus alpha j. So yeah, if I write in the column vector form, it's actually, it will be uh, like this. And then maybe I use black color. Okay, so it will be a 2 and alpha. Right, so yeah, I write everything in black color. Okay, again, because I just like the black color. So red color I can use to like highlight something. Alright, so my P actually will be 11 and negative 34. And my Q actually will be 2 and alpha. Alright, find the value of each of the constant alpha and beta such that P plus 2Q equals to uh, alpha plus beta minus 20J. So whenever you see the equation in the vector topic, so what you need to do is you can always do the comparing. I mean, later you were comparing between the i and j. But before I do that, I will just like substitute the information I have. So basically, I got p plus 2q equals to this is i, this is j, right? So i and j, I will write in a column vector form. So this is alpha plus beta minus 20. All right, then I have p and q over here. So what I will do is I will substitute my P and Q into this equation. So I will have 11 negative 24 plus 2Q. So it will be 2, Q will be 2 alpha. So it equals to the things here. So it's alpha plus beta minus 20. All right, so then, then you can do the comparing because you know uh, the first row, the first row over here is basically for your I. So you can form the first equation using your i here. So which is 11 and 2 you have to multiply indefinitely. So 2 multiplied 2 you get 4 equals to alpha plus beta. So I will get alpha plus beta actually equals to 15. 11 plus 4 is very easy. So I'm going to call this on first equation. Then I will do the same thing for the uh, second row. So which is see the, if you see the second row here. Okay, so this one will be for j. So I will say 20, negative 24 plus 2 alpha equals to negative 20. So 2 alpha, negative 20, move to the other side, it's just plus 24. Uh, it's just 4, so your alpha equals to 2. So when you get your alpha equals to 2, you can substitute back into your first equation. So then you can, of course, you can write something like sub alpha equals to 2 into 1. Then you can get something like... Uh, 2 plus beta equals to 15. Then your beta equals to 13. Okay, just like this, you can easily get your 3 mark. Alright, this is quite easy. So what you need to do is, yeah, you just substitute your P and Q into this equation and then you, understanding, uh, you understand that you actually can do the comparing between I and J. Okay, this is I, this is J. What am I writing? This is J. Alright, so yeah, just like this. This question should be very easy. So I will move on to the next one. Okay, let's have a look on B. So using the alpha and beta found in the part one, uh, find the unit vector of P plus 2Q. So of course I I, I want to know what is my P plus 2Q. Okay, so I will copy the things on the top. So my P plus 2Q basically equals to alpha plus beta alpha plus beta and negative 20 alpha plus beta i and then minus 20 j 
Alright, this is what uh, given over here. So I have my alpha and beta. Alpha is 2, my beta equals to 13. I will substitute into the things here. So P plus 2Q. This is something like 2 plus 13. So 2 plus 13 you should know is you will get 15. So you get 15i minus 20j. Alright, then of course you have to understand what is unit vector. So if I want to find a like unit vector of a, then I will just use the vector a over magnitude of a. Alright, this is sort of the formula for unit vector. I mean you take the vector that one divided by the magnitude of it. So we have the vector already. This is the vector given p plus 2q because they want to find unit vector of p plus 2q which is uh, 15i minus 20j. So what I want to do is I will find the magnitudes of p plus 2j. Okay, magnitude basically here is the modulus p plus 2q actually is the length of it. Length of it means you have to do the Pythagoras. So something like 15 square minus uh, plus negative 20 square. This is just Pythagoras and then you will get 25. Right, so I want if I want to do the unit vector of, oops, uh, I mean, wh wh what am I writing? I mean unit vector of p plus two q basically will equals to vector of p plus two q, which is uh fifteen i minus twenty j over the magnitude, uh, the magnitude which is twenty five. Done. Of course, you can write nicely, like separate them, become 15 over 25i minus 20 over 25j. Yeah, you can do that also. Both answers, I think, should be accepted. Alright, so you just need to remember about uh, uh, formula for unit vector. And then you also need to understand about what is magnitude. Alright, magnitude basically means the length of it, and then you always use the Pythagoras. Just in case some students here do not understand what is the Pythagoras formula, it's just something like a square plus b square, and then we square root it. Alright, this is the formula of Pythagoras. Then Pythagoras mostly to are uh, used to find the length of the hypotenuse. Alright, so let's move on to the third part. Alright, so we have another yeah part B. Okay. The vector a and b have the position vector a and b. So whenever you see the word position vector, it means it must always start from O. That means over here we understand that OA basically equals to A because position vector of A. Right? So it's, it's, it's mean OA. So you know that OB basically will equals to B. Alright. And then the point C so lies on AB such uh, is such that the AB ratio AC equals to one ratio of uh, lambda. Find the expression of OC. Right, so before I want to find OC, definitely you don't have OC line here, so you have to draw the line by yourself. It's from O to C. Alright, so I want to find OC is my objective. So yeah, in order to find a OC. So what I want to do is maybe I will need to get an AC or BC something like that. So but I I see an AC here, so I will not choose BC because it's more troublesome. So what I will do over here, the first step is I will actually change I will actually change the ratio into the fraction, and then I will form one equation. This is a very common mean is A over B equals to C over D. What you need to do is just write this one over this one because they're in the same ratio will equals to this one over this one which is one over lambda All right i want to make ac as the subject so over here i know ac basically equals to lambda multiply with ab All right so i will just rewrite it so i will say ac equals to lambda multiply ab of course i can find my ab easily my ab which is ao plus ob because I have OA, right? If OA equals to, if OA basically will equals to A, so AO is just negative A, and then plus B. All right, this is very easy. So it's just negative lambda A plus lambda B. Okay, this is what this is my AC. If I get my AC ready, then I can easily got my OC because I know OC means from O to C here. It's just OA plus AC, isn't it? It's just OA plus AC. 
right? So my OA is just A, and then my AC is over here, uh, which is negative lambda A plus lambda B. Right, so and then I used to like group the well, whatever a together. This one you have one here, this is minus lambda, so it's one minus lambda a. I just factorize out the a, right? Plus lambda b. This is the answer because they ask you to express, uh, find an expression of oc in terms of a, b, and lambda. So my answer is a, b, and lambda. This is what they want for oc. Alright, just in case you do not know about triangle law, this is very hard for you to do the vector. Yeah, so I will just like briefly explain about what is triangle law here. Okay, so example, if I have A, B, and C, I want to find A, C. So my A, C is my resultant vector. So if I want to find A, C, so A, C is my resultant vector. So normally what I teach my student is, you just imagine A is your home, C is your school, and AC is the shortest journey you can go from your home to the school. Alright, but then you know actually you can go to uh you, you can go from another journey which you can start from home and reach a school also, right? Which is your passing B. Because at the end you want to reach the school from your home. So I can actually go A to B. And then I reach the B already, then I go from B to C. So you, you see, so you see another route I can actually reach the school also right from the home. So from the home to the school, this is the one of the one of the way, I mean one of the journey. But you can also go from this journey because this journey also at the end you will reach the school also, right? So therefore we know A C basically will equals to A B plus B C. Right. And then from the equation here, I always ask my student to double check. If A is your home, that means this equation must start from the A here. If C is your school, you must make sure the last letter over here is C. And then just assume if the middle one can simplify it. So there must be the same, same letter. So you can find out B and B actually is the same, same letter. So you assume the same letter. If you can cut it out, you get back the AC. Okay, this idea is very important because what? If now I change it already, I I want A B as my resultant vector. Okay, so without seeing the triangle, I can actually write like this. A is my first letter, B is my last letter. And then the middle two letters must be the same. So I have A, B, C, right? So the middle one will be C and C because middle one must be the same, then I have plus them. And then this one actually make a lot of sense. So, so you just imagine. Um, so I will just e erase the. Okay, I will just erase it. And then I form again. And then I will going to show you. No matter how my triangle look like, the thing is definitely correct. So if I have a triangle randomly, A, B, and C, A, B, C. All right. So if I want to go to A, B as my resultant vector, so. In resultant vector mean a b will be my shortest journey so actually i can go from a to c and then c to b so you can see a c plus c b yeah so if you can understand the faster way actually you no need to di diagram you also can easily find the resultant vector all right this is the uh, ba basic additional law of uh, triangle in vector all right so you must understand this one if uh, in order to do most of vector question all right so yeah so we do go to the last part before we end this video. Okay, this one do not have any diagram. Okay, the question actually tell you point uh the the point S and T have the position vector S and T. So whenever I see position vector, I will always add the O by myself. So because position vector must always start from the O. So what I will do is I will say O S. Oops, I think I have some problem in writing here. Okay, again. So I will say O S basically equals to s and ot and basically equals to t all right with res uh, respect to the origin o so ost do not lie on the straight line all right given that this vector is parallel to this vector so basically i know that uh, 2s plus alpha t is parallel to uh, okay this is not alpha this one actually they call they call mu all right mu plus 3 s plus 90 
Okay, is parallel actually we learn about a uh, formula of parallel in this topic, which is whenever we have parallel, we can always say something like a b equals to lambda uh, c d. Okay, lambda over here is just a ra ratio of the parallel. Just just imagine, uh, okay, if this is a b and this is c d, if they are parallel, so so let's say this one I will I will can call it a. And this one is 2a. So basically, if ab, uh, if ab equals to lambda cd, I know ab actually equals to half of cd, right? So in, in this case, the lambda actually equals to half. So I say uh, lambda is a constant, actually, it's just a number for the ratio. Alright, so this method, uh, this method actually, uh, we, we always use to solve the parallel or collinear question. But then, in this case, yeah, they said does not lie on the straight line. So ignore about collinear. In this case, we focus on parallel. So what I will do over here is I will do something like this: two s plus m t. I I call it m lah. Easier for you to, to understand. Equals to I will do the lambda thing, and then I do the big bracket, and then m plus three s plus ninety. Okay, all right. Then the next thing is basically I will multiply the lambda into the both. So equals to lambda uh, m plus 3 s plus 9 lambda t all right then the next step is quite similar to the question just now which we were comparing the s first then after we're comparing the s we were actually comparing the uh, we were actually comparing the t all right so yeah if i comparing the s means i will actually take the coefficient of x mean the number in front of x which is the 2 equals to this thing lambda equals to uh, uh, m plus 3 since I want to find the values of m so I will make the lambda as a subject so lambda equals to 2 over m plus 3 I call this one my first equation and then after that I will comparing my t so I will know m actually equals to 9 lambda and I have my lambda I will just substitute into it so which is 9 2 over m plus 3 then I move the m plus 3 to the other side I get m square plus 3m and 2 I will multiply with 9 equals to 18 and then this one is just a quadratic equation I mean I will make it equals to 0 and then I will just factorize it I will get um, if I factorize I will get m m and this one should be 6 and 3 should be positive and negative alright in this case I will get m equals to negative 6 or m equals to 3 obviously I will reject the negative value because my m basically is positive constant so I will reject the negative so I only have one answer which is the m equals to 3 alright this question is not too hard but then uh, this question is just challenge uh, whether you understand what is the meaning of parallel or not if you understand the meaning of parallel can you able to write out this equation by yourself or not Alright, if, if you can do that, the next step is actually cha challenge you that uh, whether you know you can actually compare the coefficient of s and coefficient of t or not. If you can do that, you can easily solve this kind of vector question. Alright, I hope, I hope this uh, video actually can make you understand better about vector. Yeah, if, if, I, if I have time, I will actually make more video about vector. But I think vector is one of the very easy score uh, topic so I hope you actually can score well on it anyways thanks for watching hope you like the video